What is up, what is up, and welcome back to another episode of Blood and Beer, the show where we talk blood sport and we drink beer. I'm your host, Matt, and as always, we're talking MMA today. We're uh, we're going over this past weekend's pay-per-view, UFC 303. What a card. What a fucking whirlwind that thing was. All the change-ups, the last-minute replacements, we'll get into all of it. Our bets for the past weekend, we did all right. We profited 126.50 off of uh, 850 bucks. I meant to do 1,000, but I miscounted somewhere along the line, so I only bet 850. Profited 126, not bad. Hit big with Vinicius Oliveira, then Joe Pfeiffer by knockout, and Alex Pereira by knockout. We'll get into all that in just a second, though. Beer we're drinking today. We got some Bud Light, official drink of the UFC. All right. So let's get into the main event first. I mean, Alex Pereira, Poeton, continuing to do what he does. This guy goes out there with Yuri Prohaska. He's beat him once, but in the first fight, up until the knockout, Yuri was beating him. He was outpointing him. He even hurt him a little bit. This fight was not the same. Significant strikes were about 50 to 7, 49 to 7, I think. And he was cracking Yuri all over the place. Leg kicks. He was throwing a good jab, catching Yuri on his way in. He caught him with a hook a couple times early that didn't drop him. Then end of round one. As the bell rings, he throws a left hook, drops him. Yuri thought the fight was stopped, but it was just because the bell rang. So they get up, they go back at it. Ten seconds into the second round, high kick, knocks him out. A ground and pound to finish him off. And still, Alex Pereira. And what's left for this guy? I mean, he's been just fucking annihilating everybody. He has, we don't know if he has any wrestling. He has a little bit of wrestling takedown defense. Jiu-Jitsu, who knows, because... He's just got that devastating power. This dude has been on fire since joining the UFC. Dana even said he didn't think he'd do too well when he came in here. He thought people would just take him down and ground and pound him or wrestle him. So where's this put him in the GOAT conversation? You got a guy like John Jones whose resume is pretty much unmatched. But in the short time Pereira has been in the UFC, defeated five UFC champions. He's had four or five title fights already in the past two years. I mean, this guy's on fire. Um, I think the only way he does get that goat that goat over his name is if he does go up to heavyweight, becomes a three-time champion, either by knocking out Aspinall or knocking out John Jones. Two tough tests, but that's the only way I think you uh, you elevate him above John Jones. But as as of right now, this dude's the biggest thing in the sport. I love Alex Pereira. Love watching him fight. I never think he's gonna win. I always bet on him because he always wins. But I I never think he's gonna win just because he doesn't have all the other skills. And then uh, we had Mohamed Ankalaev. Mohamed Ankalaev. He called out. Uh, he called out Alex after the fight. He said, "Hey, I'm next. I'm number two, and I'll sit there and trade with you." And what the fuck is this guy thinking? Why does everybody that has a wrestling background, that has good jujitsu, anything, they all say, "I want to stand and trade with this kickboxing badass." The, there's been one guy in the UFC that it's worked for, Israel Adesanya. And it took him four tries to knock out Alex Pereira. Lost decision in kickboxing, knocked out in kickboxing, knocked out in UFC. Fourth time he gets the knockout, but one out of four. And that dude's the best technical striker the UFC has seen in a long time. So, Uncle Live, if you stand and strike with Alex, you're done. You're getting knocked out. Wrestling, you could beat him, but probably not going to wrestle him because you're a dipshit just like all the other light heavyweights that want to stand and trade with this fucking savage. All right, but that was the main event. That was Alex Pereira doing Alex Pereira things, being the biggest thing in the sport right now. The co-main event was fucking nuts. Dan Ige. We didn't mention him at all last month leading up to this. Where did he come from? This dude comes in five hours notice because Brian Ortega has to pull out of the fight after changing weights. So Dan Ige comes in five hours notice, says, don't take this opportunity away from me, Hunter. Let me do this. Let me come in. And this is what legends are made of. And it sure as shit was. This dude comes in 165 on five hours fucking notice and fights Diego Lopez, this fucking firecracker, this dude with crazy jujitsu, heavy hands, and a chin from fucking who knows where. This dude is tough as fucking nails. And this fight was awesome. I mean, first two rounds, Lopez was giving it to him. Uh, working the ground game well, almost submitted him a few times, but Ige's got a good ground defense, and when it went back to the feet, it was pretty close, Ige was doing good, good work, 
Third round, Lopez was fucking gassed, and Ige could sense that he was hunting him down. He almost got him out of there, I thought, but they went to the ground. Ige maintained top control, couldn't really get the ground and pound because uh, Lopez was holding on to him a lot, but hell of a fight. Dan Ige on five hours notice to be the fresher guy in round three. He didn't get the decision, but come on, man. That dude had to make so much fucking money doing that, and then after the fight, they both said they wanted to fight at the UFC sphere. Dana White says, we're doing it. These guys have earned everything that they want. So that was fucking awesome to see. You, know, you, you see people step in on a week's notice, never on a day's notice, let alone the day of. Fucking nuts. Fucking legend, Danny Gay. All right, and then Anthony Smith. He uh, lost to Roman Delize in a pretty uneventful fight. Fight was, you know, short notice, and that one looked like it was. They just, Smith got really tired. Delize got pretty tired. Delize did more work. It was just one of those things. Not a great fight. Macy Chasson versus Myra Bueno Silva. This was a fucking awesome fight. Silva was cracking Chasson. Chasson would come back with combinations to, you know, even it up a little bit. And then in round two, Chasson, she landed a nasty elbow right above the eye, splits it wide open, massive gash, ref steps in, stops the fight, well, doctor comes in, and then they stop it, but it was nasty, cut looked like it was about an inch long, inch wide, two inches long, fucking huge, disgusting. That was a fun-ass fight, though, I think they got fight of the night for that one. Alright, and then we had uh, Jan Machado Gary, he took on MVP, and Gary got the nod. Gary got the win, but he uh, everything he said leading up to this fight was wrong. He said, I'm going to be faster than this guy. I'm going to be in his face. I'm going to die. MVP was faster. He was stronger. It just, the wrestling of Gary, he's got better wrestling than MVP. MVP kind of gave away the first round. Round two was close. Round three, I thought MVP won it, but Ian Gary, he took his back at the end and didn't really do anything. Kind of a uneventful fight but I thought MVP won it the moments that were awesome in the fight belonged to MVP he cracked Gary quite a few times had him a little wobbly little wobbly legs so I thought MVP won it but it is what it is Gary gets the nod stays undefeated says he wants to be the backup for the uh, Edwards Muhammad title shot next month don't fucking do it he just he's not there yet he's not that guy and then we had Joe Pfeiffer go out and get a lightning quick knockout of uh, Mark Andre Barrio. We had that in our uh, in our bets for last week. What we told you to lock in Joe Pfeiffer at plus one twenty, I think it was for a knockout. So that was nice to see. Just good combination, body head and fucking sleeps Barrio. <clears throat> then we had Cub Swanson taking on Andre Feely. This was a close fight. It was a war. I thought Cub Swanson won it, but the judges didn't think that. Um, they, you know. Is what it is. Judges fucking suck. But Swanson was hunt, hunting him down the whole time. He, I thought he had the bigger moments on the strikes. Control time was kind of not a lot done with the control. So I gave it to Swanson. Judges didn't agree. It was kind of bullshit. I think if he would have won, he would have retired going out like that, beating a stud like Andre Feely. But it is what it is. And then speaking of uh, retirements, Michelle Watterson Gomez, she retired after dropping the fight to Jillian Robertson. Got that shit kicked out of her by Jillian Robertson in the ground and pound. But, you know, she was a force in women's MMA. She was one of the pioneers. She had fought everybody back in the day. And uh, she, you, towards the end, you started to see her lose her, uh, lose her skill, lose her pop a little bit. But that happens to every fighter with age. You know, true pioneer of the sport they did a really nice video tribute to her um right after she retired while she was still in the octagon so that was cool and then andre arlovsky he had a pretty meh fight against martin boudet the fight sucked i thought arlovsky won judges gave it to boudet so it is what it is that fight sucked um just a lot of arlovsky popping and moving and boudet trying to hold so just a dull dull fighter all right, and then final fight we're going to talk about from that card. Vinicius Oliveira took on Ricky Simone, and he looked fucking awesome. That broke his leg in the second round, but he kept fighting. He kept going. He was fine. Dude fights weird. Holds his hands all the way down. Just walks forward. D dares you to strike. He's hoping that you swing at his head. Hoping he can get you with that head movement. Duck and miss. 
he did it. He he tore up Simon. He had some flashy moments. He's not going to be a he's not going to be a champion anytime soon because the dude's defense is god awful, and he'll fight somebody that has a lot more power and a lot better striking than Ricky Simone. But it was a fun fucking fight. And yeah, he almost broke his leg with leg kicks. Simone kept checking him, and he really hurt himself. But somehow he bounced back in round two, and he was or in round three, and he was good to go. That's what we got for UFC 303, though. We're going to move on. PFL, they wrapped up their regular season this past Friday. And um, their playoffs are as follows. At uh, men's featherweight, we've got Brendan Lofnane taking on Kai Kamaka. Gabriel, Gabriel Braga taking on Tamir Kaziv. Lightweight, Brent Primus taking on Clay Collard. And Godzi Rabadanov is taking on Michael Dufort. Welterweight, ah... I'm not even fucking following welterweight, but if you really want to know, Shamil Masayev versus Murad Ramazanov, Magomed Umulatov versus Don Madge, light heavyweight, this is the best division um, that they have going right now, it's Impa Kasanganai taking on Josh Silvera in a rematch of last year's finals, and then we got Rob Wilkinson taking on Dolitsan Yagshimuradov, that's going to be a fun fight, both guys can crack, so that'll be awesome. Heavyweight, we got Dennis Goldsov taking on former Bellator title challenger Tim Johnson. And then Oleg Popov taking on former uh, interim Bellator heavyweight champion Valentin Moldovsky. So uh, two, two Bellator uh, vets in there. And then finally, women's flyweight, we got Dakota Dicheva taking on Jenna Bishop. Talia Santos, former women's title challenger in the UFC, taking on Bellator flyweight champion Liz Carmouche. So that's going to start about a month from now, 31, 32 days, I think. And uh, we'll get we'll cover that as we get closer to it. There might be some substitutions. We'll see what happens. And then other news from around the combat sports world: uh, BKFC champion Lorenzo Hunt. He popped for uh, astronomically high levels of testosterone. One seventy-two to one. The absolute limit that they allow is four to one um, when comparing it your T levels to another level in your system. So one seventy-two compared to four. 40 times the limit they said you're suspended for 18 months no wonder the dude's been absolutely starching people over in bkfc though and then uh paige van zant she won her power slap debut that girl's done every combat sport known to man i think at this point from uh, karate ufc or karate mma bare knuckle boxing and now power slap she's just she's done it all gervonta davis says he's uh, eyeing a matchup with vasil lomachenko and that's my favorite boxer, favorite fighter. He's so slick, so crisp. Be a tough fight for Tank. If he can't catch Lomachenko, Loma's going to piece him apart for 12 rounds. And Loma's hard as shit to catch. He's never there when you're swinging. He does not get caught very much at all. And then finally, Michael Chandler. He says that he's uh, hoping for a matchup with Conor McGregor at the Sphere at UFC 306. But he was offered a title fight with Islam Makachev in October. So that would be 307 in Abu Dhabi, I assume. Um, I don't know how you give a title fight to Michael Chandler right now. Maybe it's just a consolation prize because they've been screwing him over with the Conor McGregor thing for so long. I don't know. It's tough to tell what's going on with that. Um, but yeah, that's all we have for the MMA news, combat sports news going on right now. All I care to comment on, at least. And um, there's no... No PFL, no UFC, no Bellator, no big boxing matches next weekend. So we're going to take a week off probably. You'll see some shorts from me. So check out my channel, obviously. Always like, comment, subscribe. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think about these fights. They were fucking awesome. I heard people saying this card sucked. There were some shitty fights on it, sure. But, I mean, this card was fucking awesome. Alex Pereira ended it like that. The main event makes a card. And that main event made a fucking card. Alright, but anyways, as always, I'm Matt with Blood and Beer. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.